Welcome back to Mobility Wad. Uh, we're at the house with the chalkboard, as one is, with Matt Vincent. You re might remember that we did a part one of what to do be before surgery. How to think about eating, what can you control, right? A little bit of uncertainty, have yep. an athlete transitioning into this injury phase. We did a follow up, what to do after surgery. What can I control? How do I begin to keep myself metabolically intact? What can I control? Well, part three today is that we've got Matt a few months after some surgery Ease. Surgeries. Yeah. Surgeries. Multiple for That's right. Work. So and that sometimes happens, right? It does, yeah. Like, it's never always a straight path. It's not always just an oil change. No. And uh, what we want to talk about today specifically is some strategies around getting prepared to return to train. And specifically around in your case was what to do to get your quads to re-engage with your brain. And what strategies did we employ to keep Matt as intact as possible given sort of the demands of surgery, which is a conversation because what's happening right now in the world is we regularly see people go through, good athletes go through rehab, and then rehab doesn't really do it necessarily a great job of bridging us to return to play. Right. And so then all of a sudden you graduate and you're like, good luck with snatching 300 pounds again or throwing a stone across a parking lot or whatever it, right. whatever it is you do as a, as a Highland Games athlete. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So first and foremost, um, you, you had a ACL, ACL repair. Yep. You had an Oats procedure, Oats procedure, which is where they put in brand new shiny cartilage onto cartilage that was less than shiny. Right. Right. And then what happened after that? Just goes we quick. We did a high tibial osteotomy. Bam. Okay. So then start. it turned out you were weight bearing front on one side. So they just they basically got the car jack out, wedge one side wedge up, wedge one side up to unload the knee a little bit. Yeah. And one of the things that uh, you made a really as a cornerstone of your rehab was to toy with your body composition diet right. yeah well that was for me that was what can i control and what i can control is what i'm putting in my mouth and so let's figure out what diet can work for me let's track some calories let's learn some more about this what's a weak spot for me what do you weigh what'd you weigh when we film those in the backyard two probably 85 290 strong so you were strong you're really strong yeah what would you what i remember you had just pulled what did you pull six of them uh, 675. You've pulled 675. Yeah, yeah. And remember, you're just, just a working athlete. Right, not right, a right. I'm not a power lifter yet. Right, but, but pretty strong. We'll yeah. see, we're going to go, anytime you pull above six, it's, those are real numbers. I guess now, I guess you have to pull eight to have a real number, but you get the idea. Right. But the idea here was that, you know, you took on a chance to say, hey, look, I can really toy with some eating regimes. Mm -hmm. And that gave you a sense of control. Right. And also set a condition for really excellent healing. True. Right. You know, so I went with a more ketogenic style. I knew that carbs and I don't get along as far as me trying to manage weight. And so going that route really also helped with the benefits of keeping inflammation out, doing these other type of things. You, you ate a, a diet that was sort of anti-inflammatory, not in terms of just you weren't on a whole bunch of pro-inflammatory pro foods. That's Correct. what we'll just say. Like yeah, without, yeah. without dipping down, Sure. you basically stripped out a lot of the junky carbohydrate. Yep. That will will call as part of the typical standard athletic diet, yep. right? But you really just sort of say, hey, I don't need to, all this carbohydrate, and then you really tried to eat in a way that just kept yeah, the, kept the burner it, on keep low. Yeah, keep it pretty simple. You know what I mean? Stick with uh, using fat as more of an energy fuel since it kind of burns low and slow, and I'm not as active. I don't need that big spike to go do something crazy. That's right. Now, in terms of training, you we got you you had a bike, yep, salt right? bike. You have an assault bike. Um, you've done lots and lots of upper body, and I don't think we need to, uh, you know, sort of, you know, elicit uh, sort of strategies on should you bench and press because you have been yeah, doing well, a lot you? of that, and yeah. even some classic bodybuilding. Yeah, some, you know, it's just something different to do because you're bored and I can't squat, so I may as well do upper body of some sort four days a week. Okay, you also in this time have gotten serious about you. Put a hot tub in. Yep. So yeah. Rehab. Hot. Yeah. Rehab. Serious. Cold tub as well. You, you have a freezer, which yeah. you, you put out on the Instagram, and so you're getting cold regularly. Right. Every day. Yeah. Two or three times a day, actually. Has that heat cold cycle affected your tissue health? I think I think it's been great. The one thing that I've gotten really good at in the last two years is managing swelling and inflammation. Ah. I can, I can absolutely get rid of inflammation. You are a power dot athlete. Right. And that power dot is a neuromuscular. Mm -hmm. Stem unit that uses to flush, right? We yep. can basically decongest tissues, and you're really good about it, and you are diligent about it. 
you also, I remember giving you the, the rundown around left flow restriction. Yep, yeah, occlusion training as well, I've, I've used that, uh, as well as contrast and cold and elevation, and I've got a pair of uh, rapid reboots. Uh, Any supplements that you found to be particularly useful? Um, CBDs have been really, really good for me. Uh, Tumor. And if you're if you're in a legal place, we need to talk about. We can't have. We probably have a whole conversation. But right. it, it, you know, CBD is not always. Like you can get in California, you can get CBD at the drugstore yep. because it's come from hemp. Right? Well, you, it's you a can hemp order CBD without THC. That's right. Right. And so the CBD is the anti-inflammatory part. That's the part you should care about. You also have been using turmeric. Turmeric as well. Um, the bone and joint stuff from Vital Proteins has been really good, as well as some of my other supplement sponsors have been have some good joint support. That's right. So now, what has worked, because we'll get into some specifics here, but what has worked around keeping the knee engaged? Because from a rehab perspective, a lot of times what we do is we have a whole bunch of exercises that rhyme with quad sets. Quad sets. Right? Which yeah. is literally flex your quad. Flex your quad. Now, let me, let me, if for those of you who don't know what that means, it means like I literally go like this. And I flex my quad. Yep. And we think this does a couple things. One is that it passes the time when you can't do anything else, right? right? Well, oftentimes what we find is that the thing that gets lost with the nerve blocks, with the marcane in the joint, with the swelling is, and remember, even just as much of a tablespoon of fluid in the knee joint can shut down and alter proprioceptive awareness, which means you can lose a lot of quad function with just a little bit of swelling in the knee. Plus, add some, you know, some surgery on top of that. And one yeah. of the things that happens is that knee sort of gets taken out of the, the brain cycle. Right. And that quad set is one of the ways that we can maintain neuromuscular connection. Now, I also suspect what's really happening with that quad set, why we want to obsess about it, is that it's the only time we're actually getting quad flexion, or like quad pumping, and it's actually doing more probably, you know, lymphatic drainage than it is neuromuscular control. I, I agree, too. And for me, you know, it's as big a part of a, I mean, I was, after the last procedure, I had another eight weeks of no weight bearing. <laughs> so, you know, trying to, trying to hold muscle mass and I can't stand is tricky. So, you know, inclusion mixed with doing the quad work, doing the leg raises, doing stuff like that with the power dot or something like that. Something that's going to make sure that thing locks down hard and I'm trying to squeeze with it. Yeah. And that was one of our strategies of saying, hey, look, when, when you are using a tensing device, is that go ahead and try to get your brain to contract with it. So the tensing device acts like a really low-key Russian stim. Right. Right. Leg is straight. I can get a good solid muscle contraction. I can start riding that muscle contraction back into, into correction. And simultaneously, I'm, I'm pumping out. With the occlusion, which is one of the things we've talked about a lot, we teach it a one or two course, you know, the easy way to do occlusion is a simple model that we use is, you know, 30 reps, yep. rest 30 seconds, 15 reps, rest 30 seconds, 15 reps, rest 30 seconds, 15 reps, rest 30 seconds. So it's 30, 15, 15, 15 with 30 seconds of rest in between. Or do a whole bunch. Yeah. Or get do, a good yeah, burn, rest, right? Do, yeah. do some failure. It's usually about three to five minutes of work. Right. Right, but one of the things that we're happening is that when, and we want to remind everyone to put occlusion first or BFR, blood flow restriction training, as part of your strategy firsthand, even if you don't have a tensing device, because it is a really potent way to force vasculature to work appropriately so that we can sidestep some of these things called complex regional pain syndrome like things. It's when sort of you get sort of poor communication between vasculature and brain and the, the, the swelling response goes haywire and you don't do that if you right. are getting good vascular control. Um, and also we get this big hormonal kick, right? right? It's difficult to have sort of loads that respond or, or elicit a big neuroendocrine response. This has been shown to do it over and over again. Yeah, because I, I can't squat and so I mean, it was really nice to have another option that I could get muscle soreness in my quad without any weight bearing. And that's, it's, it's freaky, isn't it? Yeah, and look, it's not like, I don't think it's going to build my quads. I'm not going to, it's not the same, it's not going to replace 10 sets of 10 squats. But I can't stop, do that. Stop, dude, all you need to do is occlude and get on an exercise bike. Don't even do that, just occlude and go, and go to the, on the power And go to the Olympics, right? Okay. You know, when we have a surgery, we're trying to keep, get the brain turned on as fast as possible. And how many times have I said, get the, let's get the power dot on you. Yeah. 
like hours after surgery. Well, it's it's to the point now that my, my surgeons have been good enough that they have TENS units on me when I come out. Which is our goal. Right. So we're immediately getting immediately, ahead of swelling. As soon as I'm awake, right. it's, it's as low a pump. It's not painful. It's anything, but it's moving. That's right. And that's, and that's what it's about. Right. Sometimes what we're seeing is that if we can get non-threatening motion in the joint, your brain hears that motion and it doesn't hear joint pain. Right. right. I mean, if you think of like, I, I've come out of surgery and I'm, I'm three days before they, I have so much galls on my leg that I can't do anything. That's right. And I can't take it off. I can't do any of this. So that's 72 hours of really important time that I'm not wasting. That's right. And, you know, besides just getting that leg elevated, which is difficult, you know, ambulation right. is tricky. You don't really want to get on the bike and do, I mean, just, yeah. you just, it doesn't feel great. I'm right. just not ready to go yet. We, we really trust our athletes in terms of their desire to train, and the second they can get on a bike, they, they will. Are. They yeah. will, right? But there's a lot of things we want to do because in that first 72 hours, we can get ahead of this swelling cascade. That means we are drawing, uh, addressing a lot less pain through movement, and we're, we're getting the garbage out and bringing the groceries in, right? Right, which is a big deal. Okay, so now we've, we know that occlusion, and we would recommend it at least once a day for the occlusion, and people oftentimes are like, how many times, times they can do this? I'm like, let me know how it goes. Right. Because it's pretty intense. You pump like a madman. Yep. You live on that thing. Um, you're exercising whenever you can. You're controlling your diet. But let's talk specifically about um, some of the strategies. So when, as soon as you're weight-bearing again, right, some of the things that we, we focus on are, hey, let's keep the legs straight and let's weight-bear. What's standing press look like? Right. right. Just... Without moving the joint, let's just weight bear through the joint and do some work. Right. Let's let's show it that we're going to hold hold body weight again. We're not going to sit there and and hide away from it. Now, even I mean, you know, we appreciate that it gets complicated even in the training. Like you've described in the last few days, that you've gotten really good at going up with your Left non-surgical yeah. leg and down with mm -hmm. your, and that's your default. And now you're having to train yourself out. Yeah, of I'm trying to break that habit again now because I, I don't really have pain climbing stairs, but I've got a lot of rework to that system that I've got to redo because it feels very strange to go upstairs. And there's this old model in physio, we say up with the good, down with the bad, but they're both good legs. Just we don't, we don't like that. We feel like yeah. that's not leg centric like language. Where we value you both could legs. Hurt the other you, legs. Yeah, you want her blood legs. The feelings, garbage right? leg. Is oh what man, it. I don't, I don't want, to, I don't want to say it's, she's the trashy leg. Yeah, this one's a dumpster you know? fire. Yeah, the, right. So, okay. So one of the things though that we're we're seeing is, um, you know, we're we're moving out of this acute phase. And let's pause this video. Um, we we know we've got some strategies on board to sort of keep you alive. Now you're weight bearing. What do we do next? Now and we'll next. come back for part two.